uh, libraries uh, a stable source of income. So once the Rogers Act passed, the San Francisco Free Library was able to open its doors the following year in its first building, which um, was actually, it was a shared building. It was in a large auditorium on the second floor of Pacific Hall, which was on Bush Street just west of Kearney. So they were on the top floor. Um, so on opening night on Saturday, June 7th, 1879, both Senator Rogers and Halliday made um, you know, there was a big party, and there also were many auspicious statements um, about the future of both San Francisco uh, and the library itself. So Halliday would then spend the 80s and 90s overseeing the proliferation of his cable tramway and cable car worldwide, so he's very busy. Uh, he also headed up the Chamber of Industry, which was a um, progenitor to the Chamber of Commerce. And he'd continued serving as regent of the University of California, uh, specifically managing the finances and also supervising the development of the Lick Observatory, uh, the California School of Mechanical Arts, and the Wilmerding School of Industrial Arts. So he didn't slow down. Backing up a little bit in time, on November 18, 1868, he would marry Martha Woods. She was much younger then. Um, <laughs> she was the daughter of a Sacramento carpenter, and they prob he probably met uh, Father Woods um, on one of, their, one of his jobs, uh, one of his contracting jobs. Um, so by all accounts, they had a very happy marriage, and uh, these obviously are portraits of their later years. And this is a wonderful shot of their family life at their summer home in Portola Valley called Eagle Home Farm. Halliday's in the center with his face turned away from the camera and Martha is to his right. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they had no natural children, but they practically raised their niece Florence, who's sitting on the steps behind him, behind Halliday. And they also adopted a cousin's child um, Andrew Halliday Brown, who had been raised in their household since infancy. So that's the little guy in the front. Halliday would die in his bed on uh, April 24, 1900. He had suffered for years from congestive heart failure, and for some time, uh, and after some time, he finally succumbed, leaving his wife and young son, uh, Andrew Halliday Brown. <clears throat> Mrs. Halliday would outlive him by 37 years, and, and I just feel so sorry for her because she lost her husband in April and within 18 months had lost her mother and also the little boy. So um, this portrait was of great comfort to her. Uh, in her later years, it would hang in her bedroom at the Heritage House on Laguna Street, and that's uh, a nursing home still there. Uh, so the portrait was painted by a family friend Harriet Foster Beecher in early 1898. Uh, she was a student at the San Francisco Art Association, um, and this was one of the organizations that Halliday helped found. <clears throat> she would eventually paint a second portrait after Halliday's death, and that portrait resides in, uh, at the Bancroft Library at the University of California. And I dare say our portrait is better because he looks more alive in, in this one. <laughs> so Beecher, she um, was related to um, the Beecher family of the, uh, oh. yeah, Henry Ward Beecher, Lyman Beecher, yeah, Harriet Beecher Stowe. Uh, Harriet Foster Beecher would marry into the family, but uh, I'm sure she had a very interesting parties with her in-laws. Um, she was a mover and shaker in the art world and would be known for her plain air uh, works. In 1915, she also was one of the very few women artists that would be uh, selected to serve on the Panama Pacific International Exposition's advisory committee for uh, Western art. All right, so a couple years ago, the library had plans to move Halliday's portrait 
uh, in order to make way for the 1854 Bridgens map and, and its surrounding archival case, which you can view any time on the second floor. So I was very concerned about this uh, new installation and the moving of the portrait because I felt strongly that Halliday should have a good vista of at least one of the reading rooms. <clears throat> He has a good vista here. <laughs> um, anyway, when the portrait was removed, it was immediately clear that uh, it needed some repairs. Oh, also I should say, the little label on the back is, uh, was put there uh, once the painting was finished because it uh, debuted in Chicago at an art show. And it did a little tour and then made its way back uh, here to San Francisco. So as you can see, and from your beautiful little program, the uh, elaborately carved gesso frame was actually separating from the wood frame and cracked in several places, and the gold leaf was sadly discolored. But Peter Verkoven, the uh, master gilder and frame maker of Edicule, uh, was called in to rescue our portrait and ultimately, he would recarve and replace the missing ornamental features. He would fill in and replace the gesso uh, ornamental frame, the, the sections that were missing, and he'd reapply the gold leaf. And then he refit the painting. Uh, he didn't do all that with the painting, actually, in the frame. He'd refit the painting with appropriate tension uh, into the refurbished, uh, beautiful frame. And now, Mr. Halliday is now is set to face another hundred years with us. <laughs> Thank you for hosting me tonight. <laughs> <laughs>